Back in 2015, when we got in the trail camera game, the lack of educational content was apparent. And over the last 10 months, as we've dove down the archery wormholes, specifically around arrows, we find a lot of similarities. However, there is a lot of good information out there. It's just really hard to find. Point in case, when we start talking about kinetic energy and momentum. Over the last 10 years, kinetic energy has been talked about a lot that we need to be in this 25 to 40 foot pound KE uh, parameter to send an arrow through a whitetail or kill a whitetail. But when we start talking about killing whitetails, we're after penetration. Penetration does not come from kinetic energy. That is because kinetic energy does not have a direction. So when we look at the term energy, it is simply the capability of doing work. When we look at work, Work is force applied over a period of time. When we look at force, it is the movement of an object mass in a direction. So when we start gathering all this information and thinking about this from a logical standpoint, kinetic energy has no real value to this arrow penetrating an animal. However, if you were talking about bullets or killing uh, whitetails or animals with a firearm, it's a totally different story. There's a shock value there that does create trauma. But when we're talking about arrows, we want penetration. Kinetic energy doesn't matter, unless you're shooting mechanical broadheads. But with that point, if you focus on momentum, the right amount of momentum to have to, to send through a whitetail, you will also have the correct kinetic energy to use a mechanical or expandable broadhead. So as bow hunters, we need to be worried about penetration. What is the driving factor behind penetration? That is momentum. And I'm Going to skip over the physics lessons here, but if you were to calculate momentum on a very simple basis, it is mass times the velocity. Now, when you start talking about rotational mass and adding in angles, you go down in a whole deep wormhole with a ton of variables. But from the very simplest standpoint, momentum is the resistance of an object in motion to stopping or resistance to an equal and opposite force. You're probably wondering how you can possibly increase your momentum for better penetration. Assuming that we are all shooting razor sharp fixed blade broadheads, there's really only two ways you could do it. It's either through mass or velocity. So a heavy arrow at 300 feet per second is obviously gonna have more momentum than a lighter arrow at 300 feet per second. But when you add mass, it creates some problems. You have speed deprivation or velocity deprivation. So your arrow is slowing down your pin gaps start to open up, and then there's less room for judging or errors when you're judging yardage. With that also, your bow can become less efficient. So simply adding mass to create more momentum is not the answer. On the flip side, when we start looking at adding velocity, typically to do that, you have to decrease your mass. When you decrease the mass of your arrow shaft, you lose momentum. And you can say, well, I can increase my velocity through my bow. But the reality of it is your bow is capped on how much work it can be that it can apply to your arrow. You simply, if you're shooting 70 pound limbs, you might be able to squeak out 72 pounds of draw weight if you do some things with your cable. But at the end of the day, your bow has a ceiling. It can only apply so much work to this arrow. So increasing velocity really cannot be done through your compound bow. It needs to be done through the arrow build. So when you start looking at band configurations, when you start looking at configurations of the front of your arrow, making your arrow become more efficient downrange is a way to eliminate uh, velocity deprivation. With that potential, you can have your arrow carry more velocity downrange and therefore increase your momentum. You can do that through a couple different ways. Decrease the drag on your veins. This specific build uses uh, circular lift in an airfoil technology where you're decreasing the amount of drag or resistance you have from those veins. And then also you can do some things on the front of your arrow and the way that the arrow is specifically built to allow it to recover faster, thus increasing that velocity downrange. Obtaining somewhere between 0.35 and 4 slug feet per second is ideal for basically hunting anything in North America. So if you can obtain those numbers, those penetration numbers, you will also accomplish what you need for KE if you're shooting those mechanical blades. At the end of the day, there needs to be a happy medium between mass and velocity. There's no right or wrong answer. There's no black and white answer. There's pros to being heavy and slow. There's cons to being heavy and slow, just like light and fast. Being able to carry mass and minimize velocity deprivation is the ultimate goal. But with that said, you need to have confidence in your setup. 
The entire point of this video is to help educate bow hunters in that kinetic energy is not the metric we should be looking at when we're killing animals with arrows. We should be looking at momentum and that is what we should be maximizing to maximize our penetration and have ultimate success in the bow hunting woods.